Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm EVM and this is an update video on this thing here, our heat pump. Now, a few months ago we got this installed and I did a video where I showed you the installation, the heat calculations that went around it and all the modifications to the house that we did to fit it. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to watch those in terms of how we installed the thing. But in that video, we got a ton of comments, and I mean a lot of comments, from people wanting to know more. But I couldn't give them that data then because I didn't have it, but I now do. So they wanted to know how efficient it's been running, how much it costs in terms of electricity versus the gas boiler that it replaced, and ultimately, how much did it cost to install? And what's it like to live with? Things like that. So that's essentially what this video is about. An update on our heat pump, now I've got two months worth of solid data to at least point us in the direction. Now I'd love to do this outside in what looks like a lovely day, but it's actually freezing. So I think I need to go somewhere a little bit more whiteboardy to explain and show you the various data and calculations and prices of what we've got so far. Any excuse to get the whiteboard out, of course. Uh, I apologize for the bright light. My normal lighting system has gone kablamo. So I'm stuck with essentially that one. Anyway, this table is going to compare a heat pump versus our gas boiler that we used to have installed. So the heat pump data will be the actual data from September 11th to November 12th of this year. The gas data is coming from the exact same, the exact same time period, but for 2021 of last year. I've also got the heat geeks to do their maths and clever stuff I don't understand to adjust this figure because this year is warmer than last year. So they've looked at the average uh, temperatures, done all the facts and figures and complicated maths, and that has been uh, adjusted accordingly. So this should be essentially how much the gas boiler would have used, how much the heat pump would have used in the same house over the same time period. So it's as close as a direct comparison we could realistically ever get. Once I've given you these figures, so that's the efficiency, the kilowatt hours in terms of how much they used in electricity or gas, and then the cost of each based on the price cap, today's price cap of 34 pence, versus 10.4 pence for gas. So I'm not basing this on what I've paid on the time of day tariff with solar panels and home battery system. This is assuming none of that exists and you're just on the standard price cap. Once we've done that, I'll then tell you how much the gas boiler would have cost us to replace with the new gas boiler. And then obviously how much the heat pump cost us. And I should point out that's how much the heat pump would cost us if we ordered it now rather than what we paid, because even though it's only been five or six months since we ordered it, prices have already gone up like everything else in the world. Um, so again, today's prices for all of this. Let's look at the efficiency now of the gas boiler. I've picked 85% efficient, because that's what everybody seems to be telling me in the heating industry and online and so forth, of roughly what a gas central heating, gas central heating on demand boiler would get. In reality, mine's probably a bit lower than that, because again, like most out there, well oversized, not the most efficient install, which was done presumably when the house was built. Uh, this is the amount of kilowatt hours we used in gas during effectively a two month period, 1,307 kilowatt hours. Now let's look at the efficiency of the heat pump, which is separated into two different uh, categories, if you will. DHW or domestic hot water, which to you and I is just hot water, and then the heating. So that's the radiates, the central heating system essentially. So in terms of hot water, which is now different for us in the fact that we've got a hot water cylinder that's heated up at night by the, by the heat pump to 51 degrees centigrade. Yes, Legionella is taken care of with cycles. Um, and then that's it, that sees us through the day until it heats up again the following day. So far in this two month period, we have got a COP for hot water of 3.1, or as I prefer to say it, 310% efficient. For heating, we have got a COP of 4.8, or 480% efficient. Now, if you're wondering how anything can be above 100% efficiency, that's because a heat pump doesn't generate anything. It moves heat from outside to inside, whereas a gas uh, boiler 
literally generates heat. It burns gas to generate heat. That can't go above 100%, absolutely. But this is just moving heat from outside to in. If you want to know more in detail, but in a simplistic way, look at this video from the Heat Geeks. That explains it in a nice, easy to understand, simple manner that even I can understand. Uh, and that's how it's, it is efficient as it is, because you're moving heat from outside, not generating heat. It's not magic, it's just physics. Right, so how many kilowatt hours did the heat pump use in electricity in this period? It is 373 kilowatt hours worth of electricity. Now, you might be looking at these efficiency figures and going, hang on a minute, even if we look at that and then look at that, it, it, there's something not right here. And you're correct, there is another reason for this discrepancy. It's not just the big factor that it is a lot more efficient. It's also the fact that a heat pump, if it's done correctly, will be done, uh, well, it's a bespoke solution. It's tailored to each house. Every house is different. Whereas gas central heating boilers for the last however many decades have just been thrown in, way oversized typically, and one size fits all. So you've got a one size fits all solution versus a custom solution. And of course, a custom one's always going to be better. If we put the same effort into a gas central heating system, i.e. getting all the heat calculations done, making sure the radiators are sized properly, then that would be lower. But very, very few people do that or get it done with a gas boiler. So that and the efficiency accounts for why we're looking at not far off a megawatt hour of difference in just two, two months. That's why the government has such a hard on for heat pumps, even though a lot of houses out there would not be suitable for one yet. I am not naive to that fact. And you know, a lot of people can't afford one. Look at the difference in terms of our energy consumption for this house. Imagine if millions of houses did this. That would be a huge reduction in the country's energy consumption, as well as obviously getting rid of the need for gas. Anyone that says heat pumps work for everyone is wrong. Anyone that says heat pumps don't work, again, wrong. Just ask Scandinavia, who have used them for decades and they're far colder. So clearly the technology does work. I mean, hell, it's powering your fridge and your freezer, but ultimately it's part of the solution. It's not the whole solution. Right, let's move on to these facts and figures again. Uh, cost. So in terms of uh, the gas at 10.4 pence on the price cap, that would have cost us, had we had a gas boiler this year, 135 pounds. I've rounded that down rather than put the pence in. So 135 quid. Whereas the heat pump, again, based on the price cap price of 34p, would have cost us £126. So there's a little bit of saving there if you're on the price cap. So that's no solar panels, no home battery systems, no time of day tariff, 126 quid versus 135. Now, clearly, it's probably not going to justify itself on the install price, but that does... It does show people that there's a perception out there, for me anyway, that heat pumps are very, very expensive to run because electricity is a lot more expensive than gas. But when you factor in this and the, you know, the one size fits all thing, then actually it's probably going to be cheaper. Again, summer, that is going, that's going to go above 500% in summer, but it's obviously going to drop in winter. It's the average over the year, the seasonal or scop is what I'm going to eventually show you once I've got a year's worth of data. Now let's look at how much it's cost us on our tariff, which is Octopus Go. That's four hours of cheap and uh, 20 hours of expensive. And I'm going to use today's prices, not the one that we're still on for now. That's 12 pence for the four hours and I think 40 pence for the other 20. We also have, of course, the solar panels, which are doing less and less as we get closer to winter and the home battery which is the key to all this. Because I've just had a recent upgrade, should we say, or change of home battery system. And now that essentially can charge up at night using cheaper electric and power the house and the heat pump throughout the rest of the day. And probably will still do in winter as well. So based on the actual usage and smart meter figures that we've been charged, this is how much it's cost us over the last two months, 55 pounds. Yes, we've spent thousands of pounds on solar panels, home batteries and various other things to get to this point. So I'm not suggesting this is something that everyone could do because clearly that's not going to be the case. But this is why we 
and that's the whole point of this video this is our journey in our house this is why we went for the heat pump partly because we needed a heating system our gas boiler was failing we had to make a decision so although we would have done it regardless this is not purely a financial decision for us we wanted to get rid of gas as in using gas i do as a yorkshireman try to make it make financial sense of course so that for us is 80 so call it 40 pounds a month cheaper during autumn i suppose uh, to run compared to the gas central heating system essentially i've done the figures and tried to estimate what the, our savings will be over 12 months worth of heat pumpery and that works out at 450 pounds over the year and i'm being very conservative in that in reality i reckon it'll be closer to 550 because we can hopefully very soon once we get rid of the gas um, hob get rid of the gas meter completely and therefore we won't have to pay the very near 100 pounds a year charge just for the standing charge of the gas just to have gas so for us we're clearly going to benefit but is it going to make sense even for you know with all the other stuff we have i imagine if you're on the price gap and you're just going for a gas uh, uh, a heat pump instead of gas boiler then that nine pound saving is not going to cover the heat pump so the few cuts we had for the to do a replacement of the gas boiler with another and bear in mind that this doesn't include the optimization the heat calculations changing a few of the radiators that was two thousand seven hundred pounds that was the average quote we've got for the couple of companies companies that we asked for the heat pump that was that was a little bit more expensive if, uh, if i'm being honest that uh, works out at thousand pounds <laughs> okay okay I'll, I'll, I'll tell you essentially that came to <clears throat> Thirteen and a half thousand pounds. However, with the boiler upgrade scheme grant, which is five thousand, that ends up being eight thousand five hundred pounds. Clearly, if we just average it off, nearly six thousand pounds more expensive than replacing our duff boiler with another gas one. So we're six grand down essentially, but we're saving not far off five hundred pounds a year. Again, this is very conservative. I'm convinced it will be higher. And gas is, is going to close the gap on electricity. So the more time goes on, that will be higher. There is a political will to make gas more expensive and electricity, well, probably not any cheaper, but gas is catching up. If I look back over a few years, my gas has gone up 500% in price terms. Where, and that's the price cap. Whereas electricity has gone up 300%. We're probably looking realistically with the standing charge for us personally about 10 to 11 years because again it'll be high even if we say 12 years for it to have saved enough for it to have justified for it to have man mathed itself however we were going to do this regardless it's about getting rid of gas as i said it's not just a financial thing not everybody does something because it saves them money no one ever says I want a new kitchen, but how much is it going to save me in money? Some things you just buy because you want them for whatever reason. So this is what our house can get. It doesn't mean that your house won't be more expensive or even cheaper when it comes to the heat pump actual cost. So what's this heat pump like to live with? Well, I would say it's more comfortable, to be honest, because the lower temperature radiators means you get warm radiators that are just slightly fluctuating in the house temperature as opposed to hot radiators that are going cold, then hot, then cold, then hot and it just wildly fluctuates. So it's definitely more comfortable to live with, but I guess if you lower the temperature of your gas system and it was equally as uh, well-designed, you would have a similar experience. But ultimately, yeah, it, it's just a heating system. My wife hasn't even noticed, so that's probably a good thing. Before I go, I just want to also dispel a, a few myths that were quite prevalent in the comments section of the previous video as well. Uh, one is that you have to have a hyper insulated house triple glazing underfloor heating all that sort of stuff you don't i mean the more efficient your house is the lower these prices are but that would be the same for a gas boiler so yes it's better to have underfloor heating because it's more efficient but that's the same regardless of the heating source we have the exact same house now that we did for the past few years with the gas boiler it's not changed. We haven't changed the windows. We haven't got underfloor heating. We've got the exact same radiators on this entire floor that we had before. 
because they were so oversized with the gas boiler, even at a lower temperature, they're actually perfect. I can push mine to above 70 degrees centigrade if I wanted to. A gas boiler would never need to be that high either. It's ridiculous, you wouldn't need it. But because you can, it means you could heat pretty much all, well, almost any property. It might not be suitable from a running cost point of view because the higher the temperature, the lower the efficiency of the heat pump. But again, that's the same with a gas central heating boiler, although not to such an extreme. So yes, it does help. Insulation is where we started nine years ago when we started this whole kind of home energy journey. So you know what? There's no one size fits all solution like with the gas boilers. Heat pumps are part of the solution, but not for everyone. You might not be able to afford it. You might not be able to physically fit it in your house or outside your house. You might live in a flat. There's all sorts of things that stop people getting them, like electric vehicles at the moment. They're not for everyone yet. They're too expensive, our heat pumps, for, for, for the majority of people to justify it for now. If you look like a heat pump, and there's a lot of people again in the comment section of the previous videos that really, for some reason, hated heat pumps. I don't know why, it's a heating system. Then, well, I'd have to say, why are you watching this video ultimately? But for me, it's been a real big positive. It will save us money, although not massively justifiably so, considering how much the thing cost. However, we have now got no gas, we're fully electric, and as I see it, we are now protected. Our heating bills and, well, house running bills are as low as they could realistically go. This is as cheap to run as possible is this house now, for us. We've used the money to do that rather than, well, quite frankly, a kitchen. I, I, I want a new kitchen, she wants a new kitchen. We went for this first. I want this video and all this data to just be part of your research. I'm not suggesting you get a heat pump. I'm not suggesting anybody does. I do not get paid by Valent. I do not get paid by a heat pump lobby, whatever that is. I promise you I don't. There isn't a, uh, you know, a cabal of people out there pushing heat pumps that have bigger financial clout than the oil industry paying small YouTubers such as myself to push heat pumps. I mean, think about what you're saying. I, I wish it was true. I wish I was getting paid for this, but I'm not beyond typical YouTube algorithm stuff and obviously sponsorships from firstforsolar.co.uk. But at the end of the day, again, you do what you want. I couldn't care less what heating system you get. This is just hopefully to help people who are looking into it. If you want to help the channel out, then visit the sponsor. And of course, if you want to become a member, click the join button, which is next to subscribe. And for 99p, you get early videos, well, up to a week early, some uh, members only videos, and I'm starting to do uh, live streams just for members. So you can ask questions directly rather than have to email or use the comments or something like that. Hopefully trying to make it a bit better. All for 99 pence. Oh, and if you have an iOS device, for some reason you can't sign up on an iOS device. It has to be uh, an Android or a PC desktop laptop or something like that. I don't know why, but there you go. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm done now. Um, see you soon, I guess. Maybe after winter in regards to the heat pump as I'm freezing to death because it doesn't heat in winter. <laughs>